Hello, thank you for joining us today. I'm Marche, the webinar director at Advice Chaser. Before we introduce our guests and get started, I do need to do a little bit of legal housekeeping. Advice Chaser, the host of this webinar, is not a registered investment advisor. We cannot and do not give financial advice. Today's presentation is for educational purposes only and cannot be considered advice for any person's individual situation. Advice Chaser regularly hosts informative webinars, such as this one featuring a variety of knowledgeable professionals, many of whom are licensed advisors. Any opinions, ideas, jokes, or principles expressed by presenters are their own and however true, funny, or, or interesting are not endorsed by Advice Chaser. Please do not act on the information here today without consulting a qualified financial professional. We're so thrilled to bring you this educational presentation today. I think this is going to be an especially great topic for our attendees. Attendees, uh, just so you know, you are muted, but we encourage you to ask questions using the chat box. And we do wanna keep it a little more conversational. So please go ahead and ask your question. We'll make sure to answer those. Uh, the presenters will answer those before um, the end of the webinar or during our question and answer period at the end of the webinar today. We want this experience to be as educational as possible. Please don't hesitate to reach out, ask for clarification or expansion of the material. So I'd love to introduce you to today's uh, guests from 56 Capital Partners. First, we have Derek Martin, who is a Mi Michigan native and enjoyed working on his family's farms. Cattle and grain on his father's side and fruits and vegetables on his mother's. With a bachelor's degree in finance and economics and health sciences from Kalamazoo College and an MBA with a specialization in corporate finance from Walden University, Derek worked with small blue collar business owners to help manage their finances after working on the farm. Feeling he needed to serve the country he loves, Derek earned the title, the title U.S. Marine and served active duty in the Marines as an officer for five years. Derek is married, enjoys being a lifetime NRA member, and loves the beautiful outdoors in Colorado. And Derek, we're looking forward to hearing from you today. Uh, we also have Aaron Watkins here today. Aaron is a Georgia native, a true Southern belle, who is now happy to call Colorado home. Mm -hmm. After receiving her bachelor's in business administration in finance, with an emphasis in risk management and insurance, Erin and her husband packed up everything and moved to Colorado, where her husband served in the Army. She is currently working on obtaining her MBA from Colorado State University. She has many hobbies, ranging from skiing, climbing, photography, and playing with her animals, and she loves to create relationships with her clients. So we are excited to have uh, both Derek and Aaron here today. And I believe Aaron, you're kicking us off. So I'm just gonna go ahead and advance to the next slide. Thanks Marche for having us. We're excited to be here. Uh, today, we're gonna talk a little bit about transitioning from the military to a civilian career. Uh, so we're gonna start with what do you need? What do you want? And then we always like to say, lower your expectations either way. Remember, there are government organization that are trying to help you transition back into the civilian sector. Uh, so you are going to have hiccups along the way. Maybe it'll go perfect. Maybe it won't. But <laughs> we're going to try and help you with a little bit of advice that can make it go a little bit smoother. So with that, we've put together kind of a timeline for you. Uh, we're going to focus on pretty much six months before and 12 months out after your D-Day. Uh, we're going to go into detail about all of those and kind of what you need to look for and what you should be looking at and doing uh, during those transition times. So the first one is six months out. So you're going to start looking for transition careers. Uh, we like to say that if you plan to take more than two weeks vacation, double dip or plan a federal career, uh, make sure you have that in mind when you're looking at transitioning in your career. Uh, you don't want to do it too early, uh, but you also want to make sure that you're clearly communicating your intentions with that job that you are potentially getting. Um, you can double, double dip, which is really nice. So be looking at that. Uh, you want to also start looking for outside solutions like life insurance, long-term care. Uh, what we've seen in the past is that if 
you are trying to obtain insurance outside of the military, for instance, you have um, documented issues already, those are going to be found from, from those insurance companies. As you're transitioning out though, you want to start making sure that you're setting up doctor's appointments to document all of those things that you might have going on or things that you might not have going on. Um, but if you do look to get outside insurance, make sure that you do that before you go do all of your doctor's appointments to determine what your disability ratings are going to be, just in case. Um, let's see, then LinkedIn resume, resume review. So start to work on your resume. There are tons of resources out there for you. Uh, one of the ones that uh, I've used in the past actually as a military spouse was the ACS. Uh, they have employment readiness resources that are really helpful in helping you build whether a federal resume or a civilian resume. Uh, you wanna phrase things in terms of business. So I did X resulting in the benefit of Y. Um, a lot of federal companies are looking for bigger things than what, what you did, not what you're currently doing. Um, they're going to want to know that they, you'll benefit from what they are paying you for. Uh, and then put transitioning in your title and select the box that you're transitioning so recruiters, recruiters will know how to find you. Uh, we want to also inform you about family communication. This is a big one. Um, your family is super important if you have one, and they need to be part of this conversation as well um, in terms of moving or if you're going to take on a reserve position. Um, determine where you want to end up as the military will pay you for all of the expense to move if you're based there or on your original home of record. Um, there's no sense in moving twice. Additionally, you need to think about your career and if you want to completely hang up the uniform or not. That's what I meant in terms of reserves. Um, security clearances. So if your security clearance is about to end, make sure you push through a renewal. Uh, that's crucial if you're looking to go on the federal side. Uh, that'll help you actually obtain a job quicker that we found. And then you want to make sure that you set your appointments with your doctor and disability claims, especially for federal jobs, because that'll help carry over. Um, a big key that we found is to partner and team up with someone ahead of you. Um, there are people who have gone through this process and you're not alone in it. So make sure that you're talking with even your senior people at your current position. They can actually help you uh, find resources or even outside resources. Uh, I know for us, since we are kind of in the situation where we transition out, we can help answer some of those questions too when people bring that up to us. And then we're looking at 90 days out. So now you're getting really close to D-Day. Uh, so what we want to look for is in that aspect is turnover. So you'll start the turnover and out processing. This is a great time to look at doing some interviews, have some family time. If you have some leave saved up, take a little bit of leave. Um, start to really get those doctor's appointments in order and make sure that you're doing all of that to prepare since you are 90 days out. You want to start applying for jobs. So if you plan to take some more time off than a couple of weeks and not double dip, now's the time to start applying and talking to recruiters. Plenty of recruiters are looking for a transitioning military. That's why it's crucial to have that transition and that title. Uh, go live with your LinkedIn and resume. So you should be able to go live. There are tons of resources out there for LinkedIn that you can utilize. Uh, YouTube is actually a great help. Uh, when it's helping you set up that LinkedIn profile. Uh, they have tons of tips that you can look for and what will help you get recognized by those recruiters and headhunters. Uh, so you've gone through your Rolodex and you add people to your network, make sure your network list is up to date and you have enough people in there uh, that you're getting eyes on you. Uh, make sure you've changed that title again, add that transitioning in there and have your resume reviewed by several pro professionals. Um, Reformat it for the private sector or public sector, um, they are different resumes. So you've got federal side resumes and civilian side resumes. Um, they have reformatted those federal resumes in the past. So make sure you go, Amazon has tons of resources for books that'll help you uh, plan out that federal resume. And again, set appointments with doctors and then the disability claim. Um, that'll help you make sure that everything's getting up to date by the time you hit that D-Day.
uh, schedule those interviews, practice, and work on your declines. I know that's really funny to say, why do I want to decline? But it's very important to know that you want to get a few under your belt. And if you get rejected, that there are ways to handle that. Uh, or even if you get offered a job, there are ways to turn that down in a professional manner. Uh, don't get all hot headed and say, I'm angry that you turned me down. There are ways that you can actually graciously turn down that job. You don't want to burn the bridges in the future. <laughs> um, and then start a budget. So this is a big one that we find a lot of people in general don't have a budget. Uh, so make sure you work with a fiduciary advisor about rolling your TSP over and other benefits that you might have. Um, budgeting will help you go from making a set dollar amount to making whatever you're potentially going to be making on the civilian side. And then school, we have a question mark by this. Uh, some people don't know what they wanna do when they transition out. Uh, some people go back to school and find that they wanna get a, a degree or uh, further their education in a topic that they've never done before. Um, it's not just school uh, higher education, but it could be like a PMP certification. Uh, figure out you know, what you wanna do and school could be an option. Uh, then we have home loan. So this is really talking about uh, the transition of moving. So you wanna look for when you move climate, schools, does your family like it? Are they going to be happy where you're going? What are the job opportunities there? Uh, do they have medical and VA facilities? That's a big one. Uh, don't be afraid to rent though. Go somewhere, try it out for six months. Uh, people who are looking for transitioning military will help you pay to get to where you're going but you might not like it. And you might find that in six months, that's not really where you wanna be. Your family's not happy. So renting is okay. You do, not, excuse me, you do not have to buy a home immediately when you move. Uh, and the last thing we have on this 90 days out is divorce. So you're gonna look at a quadro and it'll tell you how to split your benefits and the benefits you may be required to keep. Um, so I, Sometimes people go through this when they transition out uh, because it's just a hard transition for some couples to go from having this military life to now being in the civilian sector where the atmosphere is completely different, the people are completely different, the job is completely different, and it just doesn't really work well. So look at that as well. We had a comment from one of our attendees uh, about a local resource for Colorado residents, Mount Carmel Veterans Service Center. Oh, yeah. They said that they, they will assist you with your re resume civilian and federal for free. So I'm sure if you're not in the Colorado area, there are other resources mm -hmm. like that as well. Absolutely, Marche, and I'll, I'll take it for a few slides here uh, and touch on a few things there. And I would agree Mount Carmel is a phenomenal resource here in the local area. Uh, one thing too that I wanted to touch on that Aaron was discussing is going back to school. Uh, it doesn't always have to be that formalized education. For instance, yes, I do have an MBA, but when I got into this job, I realized there's a lot of certifications and licenses that I needed in order to thrive. Uh, and we actually went and were able to work through uh, the Veterans Administration to get those licensing programs for CFP or a Series 7 to, to be able to broker stocks and bonds. Uh, we were able to add those. And so therefore you can actually collect GI benefits uh, for instance, the monthly stipend uh, while you're taking those programs, which helped out because I found the private sector wasn't willing to compensate me while going and getting those, but they did require me to have those for work. Uh, so actually adding programs to where the VA will pay for as well as pay out your GI Bill benefits is not as easy um, as one may think, but it's easier uh, than one may assume. And the other thing on there in that six months to 90 days, uh, Aaron did a good job of pointing out the idea of uh, looking for private insurance. Are you able and eligible to go and get that? And then scheduling your disability doctor's appointments afterwards, as they are kind of in conflict with each other. I found that out anyways, of 
I wanted to disclose everything and put my pride aside from a disability standpoint because I wanted them to uh, look at things in case something came up, like for instance, Agent Orange from Vietnam. We didn't know about it at the time, but I wanted to make sure everything's documented. So if we find something out later on, we could come back, back to it. But what I realized is by documenting all of that, that hurt my chances with private insurance companies. So I couldn't get life insurance for when I wanted to start a family. Uh, and so I, I did that out of timing or out of sync. The other reason for people retiring to do that is the survivor benefit plan or SBP. In order to make that option, you have to know all of your available solutions. And that is private sector insurance, keeping the survivor benefit plan, or can you swap it out and self-insure? That's the reason we discuss the timing aspect so much in the six months and 90 days out because all of those things matter and they all come to a head on D-Day basically. So on, on your day to depart, uh, I made the mistake of this, but you wanna make sure that when you're going in, you have to make sure your DD-214 is accurate. It will follow you for the rest of your life. Uh, I highly encourage you make sure you don't have any uh, moving schedule that day or large parties or events. I sadly had a moving truck coming and my DD-214 was not accurate. And so not only did I have to work to provide information for them to then reference to correct it, uh, I also missed my moving truck. So lesson learned of take your dates in there with you, take any of your awards listed and bring in the information ahead of time. So that way, if something is wrong, you can quickly correct it. Uh, on the fly and get you out of there in short order. Uh, the other suggestions that I learned very quickly is ask that individual to make several copies of it for you while you're there after you've signed it. And then also have them scan, scan it in and make a PDF of it and just shoot it to your email uh, as you'll use those both frequently. Uh, and if you're moving and you're like I was, uh, you don't have a scanner printer set up. You can't make copies quite as easy on the fly. Just do it ahead of time. Uh, and the other thing that you want to start to look at is kind of the benefit overlap. So back to that timing aspect uh, that we previously discussed was uh, if you're able to be approved for outside life insurance, then you don't need to do, say, the VGLI offered uh, through the military. Uh, if you're going to try and do the pension option, which is uh, I'm going to get enough life insurance that if I did pass away, that the SBP portion isn't relevant. Uh, and instead, I'm self-insuring and choosing to, to save money that way. VGLI, while it's a great benefit, especially for those who have a lot in their jacket, medical jacket of injuries or ailments, uh, you have to kind of use some common sense. It's still another, another government contractor that won that contract. They are able to charge certain rates. And from a common sense standpoint, the people who would definitely sign up for it are those who are less healthy. And therefore the insurance company knows that and they're gonna charge more for that benefit. So we often find almost everyone, if you are insurable, you can find better insurance on the private side for a less rate. The next thing you want to think about too uh, is home loans. So I know Aaron will talk about it here as, as you're getting out and, and my opinions on things of, uh, I was a little more adventurous. Basically I was told by my wife that we weren't going back to where we lived because it's gray, cloudy and miserable seven months out of the year. That's the Northern part of the country. Uh, and we took a big risk and a gamble and we threw a dart at the map and we moved a couple of days later. Uh, something that I really benefited from and I've since seen many other uh, senior military officials benefit from is not necessarily going in and buying a home right away. We rented for a while, uh, but then that allowed us time to actually shop and find a good home loan. What we quickly found was the big companies like USAA, they don't really need to market, they don't need to do things, but they also don't have the best rates more often than not. Uh, we really encourage people to apply for the home loan while you're still in the military because 
it's easier for them to work around the fact that you still have consistent income coming in and a job. Uh, and a lot of those from an underwriting standpoint are just checks in the box that yes, you're still employed. Yes, you're in the military, but the actual loan application doesn't ask if you're getting out in six months. Uh, so you're able to say, yes, you're employed and so forth. Whereas if you exit and you're not employed right away and you do want to buy a house in a certain area, uh, getting a quality home loan with a low rate becomes much more difficult because you aren't employed. Uh, and then also uh, some changes to the laws uh, since I got out, and it's, it's a positive change for everybody, uh, is that you don't need 30% disability anymore to get the VA waived uh, funding fee. Uh, you only need 10%. And also, if you shop around your loan um, to several providers, they'll likely insure and cover the cost for you and know that as long as you have applied for your VA disability claim before you apply for the loan, that it will retroactively pay it off if you're approved at 10% or higher. So it doesn't have to have come through at that time. Uh, so don't feel like if the VAs behind, which they usually are. They're pretty good. They're about nine months behind at the time of uh, filming this. Uh, we've seen them as long as 18 months behind. Uh, so it can take a while for your VA disability claim to be paid out. Uh, we had a question here. Let's say, for example, that you don't want to buy, you want to rent for a while, you want to transition into new, a new job. About how long in that new job would um, a home loan company, you know, expect to look at, look back and qualify you for a loan? Great question. Uh, so this is also the importance of having a good mortgage officer if they're actually earning their commission. Uh, the standard answer is two years in that career. So if you're going something similar, it was very hard for me to connect being a Marine uh, officer to finance, but we found a way and stretched it that we helped individuals while we were in with their own finances and we helped teach them things as officers about finances. We were able to connect that and my mortgage officer was to say that it's really just a, an extension and a job change of my previous career. The underwriter said that's close enough that it didn't require me to have two years. Uh, if you go into sales right out of uh, your transition, often they'll want uh, two full years of either a W-2 and commission schedules. Uh, but again, if you can find some way to tie that back to your military career, uh, they can go as short as 12 months. As far as 90 days afterwards, um, this is just, again, lessons learned, Aaron's experiences as well, uh, and we've helped dozens and dozens of military transition. Uh, some things that I found out kind of quickly is uh, VA disability did not come in. Again, mine was almost 18 months afterwards. Uh, I did double dip, so I had 90 days of leave built up from multiple deployments, so I was getting paid uh, by the military. It did take over uh, 60 days uh, for most individuals to start getting their pension coming through and having it be accurate. So we do encourage if you're trying to double dip, uh, take advantage of it and make sure you're able to set that money aside uh, and build a, a safety net for yourself. On the VA healthcare, uh, I have really made it a point to go through the arduous steps of, of the process despite having phenomenal health insurance through my wife's uh, employment. Uh, and the reason is, is I wanted to be able to help navigate it for my 300 Marines that uh, may not have the, the resources that I did. Uh, so when I did it, I really quickly realized that there's a lot of great people at the VA system. They are really trying to help, but they are also encumbered by the big government that's overseeing them. And there are some restrictions. Like with anything, there's good doctors, there's bad doctors, but things that I can manage to say expect is that you're gonna have a lot of turnover. Um, good doctors come in there, they get some student loans paid off and then they're out the door because they can get paid twice as much uh, 
doing half the work or half the headaches of big government elsewhere. You also have to learn the system and recognize when you need to jump through the hoops and when you don't. Uh, a great example uh, is I had to have back surgery uh, and I knew that my back was broken uh, during my time in service. And in order to get an MRI, the VA requires you to get an x-ray first. It didn't matter, I have thousands of x-rays of my back, nothing's changed, it's still broken. But that was the process is you had to go to the x-rays, the x-rays go to the doctor, the doctor can then authorize an MRI and you go back. I've had several MRIs in my, my time since I've left the service. And in doing so, I've just learned and I don't push up a fight anymore, just schedule the x-ray and go do it. You're going to learn there's a lot of those little nuances and systems of before you get X service, you need to go do Y service. That's just part of jumping through the hoops. It's no different than when we were on active duty, you go ahead and do it. And you're also going to learn not to necessarily accept the first answer out of there. Uh, I always joked around if you sprained your ankle in the Marine Corps, you know, they'd give you two Motrin and say, have a great day. You could have a gunshot and they would say, here's two Motrin, have a great day. Uh, if the doctor's super busy and they look at you and you're having issues, they're going to typically say, here's some sort of medication, have a great day. Don't always accept um, the idea that medication is the best way to overcome your issues. And the last one is when in doubt, ask for help. Um, I can't emphasize that enough. And Aaron will talk about it here in a little bit from a family standpoint. But us as service members, we know what we went through. Uh, some people need to have group conversations. Uh, others need to have their own personal conversation. There are ample amounts of resources for mental health, especially the anxiety and depression of the shift, especially when it doesn't go as we planned. Uh, it is usually not a smooth transition, and therefore these headaches and uh, long nights approach where uh, pay hasn't come in, the new job isn't working out as well, uh, the kids aren't happy at the new school because they've lost some of their friends. It's a big shift for everyone. And so it might not be necessarily uh, PTSD related, but the new mental stresses of not having uh, the government provide every answer for you. Uh, there's plenty of resources. So I always encourage when in doubt, just ask. And it doesn't matter your rank. I've been in, in many meetings with generals who didn't know I was standing off to the side. And I think even generals, uh, when they're alone, they, they act like a, a private first class sometimes. Uh, your peers are going through the same issues and it's just whoever brings it up first is usually the one helping everyone else in the group. Uh, I thought the same thing of my fellow captains and majors. Uh, and lo and behold, as soon as I brought it up, everyone said, oh yeah, I'm doing that too. Uh, and we were able to navigate and find better courses of action through that communication with each other um, privately, which was a big benefit. The last thing I'll say on the next slide, Marche, um, is with pay issues, uh, it, first, uh, there's often issues of the first paycheck comes out either late and you have to wait one month, uh, or when it does come out, quadruple check it and make sure that everything is uh, deducted as it's supposed to be. So a great example, uh, we have a lot of clients who decide to private insure, they opt out of SBP uh, with their spouse in the meeting, and then lo and behold, the first paycheck, there's six and a half percent taken out for survivor benefit plan. Uh, that six and a half percent was obviously meant to go in their pocket, not the government's. And so we have to work to get that fixed. The other one that we see quite common uh, that people do have questions about, especially with the tax changes, uh, there's more uh, state tax changes that will take effect to military pensions uh, in this coming year. Uh, and those calculations are not always done right. So uh, review them, make sure the right percentages are done, the right states are done, and so forth, uh, as just a safety checkup. And then as far as the last for healthcare, uh, I, I definitely didn't do this one right either. Uh, sign up right away for my healthy vet. 
Uh, it's the way that the VA system works. Once you get the log in there, uh, you're able to actually access a lot of uh, retirement and pension sites uh, from that, such as your benefits, disability claims, the pharmacy appointments, uh, other parts of the VA system, uh, such as GI Bill benefits and so forth. So uh, what I thought was just associated with my health care turned out to be a lot more. The second part to that, back to you getting multiple copies of your DD-214, uh, and other things is sign up for the premier membership right away. The premier membership just simply requires you go uh, to your local VA facility, show some of uh, the paperwork, DD-214, ID, and a few others, and they'll check box that. The benefit to that is now it opens up mostly two-way communication. The premier membership allows you to send messages to individuals whereas the basic membership allows you simply to receive information. So in order to start that dialogue, in order to be able to submit things, schedule your own appointments that work on your schedule, uh, get the premier membership right away. Uh, take in your DD-214 and your ID to do that. We did have a comment here about um, going back to this topic about mental health. Um, just a comment about some behavioral health assistance. It doesn't go on your medical records for those who want to keep clearances or take certain types of jobs. Um, um, this just individual was commenting that there are services out there that, that do that. Uh, yes, and is um, part of the, we don't have it in the presentation, but uh, let me do that since it blurs it out. Uh, the new VA TAPS and, and transition book inside of there has a mental health section. Uh, since Mount Carmel isn't available all over, the mental health tab has a 24-7 uh, uh, hotline. The hotline in there also does not go in your medical records uh, and it keeps it private. So I agree with that. It does impact your security clearances. Uh, we do get the question quite often, though it's not surprising from veterans, does it impact my ability for like a concealed carry or purchasing firearms in the future? Uh, and the short answer is yes, some of those documented will come back. That's why uh, Mount Carmel is a great example for uh, Colorado members, but also that national helpline uh, does not report it and it is a private organization. Uh, run by third party volunteers. So that way you can also be assured your, your records won't be hindered in the future for that. I believe Erin, we're switching back to you now. I just wanted to comment real quick on that whole mental health thing too, uh, referring back to the outside insurance. Um, before you go and have all of the doctor's visits and everything else, uh, that is something that outside, outside insurance companies will look at. Um, sadly, you can get ratings for certain things. So depression is a big one. Um, but they look at you know, the medications that you take, how often um, and how long you've actually had that depression. So that's something to be cognizant of too if you're looking for outside insurance. And then six months after, so uh, you're gonna go to the va.gov uh, and that will help you uh, include, sorry, excuse me. It includes links uh, to other sites as well. Um, that has so many great resources for you to use. Um, again, My Healthy Vet, use that resource, like Derek said. Um, it is beneficial to get the premiere. Um, I've seen it to where you can get faster responses and get in quicker and get things done um, a lot easier if you have that access. Um, home loan letters. So this is referring to, sorry, let me pull my notes. Um, basically looking at um, the VA loans, getting those letters, making sure that they know that you're in uh, the veterans program. Um, that'll help you with that veteran waiving that fee. Uh, disability rating letters, same thing. Uh, that helps in many aspects uh, with home loans too, that you're getting disability, uh, that'll help waive that fee. Um, GI Bill benefits for kids. This is a big one that we get asked a lot. Um, so if you have not used your GI Bill and you decide that you're not going back to school, 
you can actually pass those benefits on to your kids. Or if your spouse wants to go back, if you don't have kids, you can actually pass those benefits back to your spouse. Um, those are big things to look at too, six months after if you've decided you're not going to school. And then we've got 12 months after, correct? Yep, <laughs> I was like, correct, yep. Uh, we've got state and local uh, benefits that we're gonna talk about. And then we've got some job and location statuses. Uh, so the state and local, um, there are so many benefits that are provided locally, and especially here in Colorado Springs, uh, we're a big military community. Uh, we offer tons of discounts. Um, there's the, what am I trying to think of, the uh, tags for your vehicle. Uh, Marche, can you go to the next slide for me, please? Thank you. Uh, so you can have a lowered or no income taxes, uh, lower no property tax, no vehicle tax or free plates, uh, free park access, free ATV passes, free or discounted movies, Home Depot and Lowe's discounts. A lot of people already know about most of those discounts, um, but ones that I've seen uh, in the time that we've helped people transition are they don't take advantage of like things, for instance, in Colorado, the DV plates. Um, that's actually something that you should take advantage of, especially if you have a newer vehicle. Uh, tags can be really expensive, and if you're transitioning out, that's one less bill that you have to worry about paying. Uh, for my situation, I'm not able to get that because I'm a spouse, uh, but if you look at uh, the spouse, spouse's car, if the um, military service member owns that vehicle and they're a disabled vet, they're able to actually write, not write off, sorry, get that tag for free as well. Um, annually, you can do park passes, meaning uh, if you go to state parks, um, Colorado does have a state park. If you have DV plates, you're able to get into a lot of state parks for free. Uh, and then national parks as well. It's just as simple as going up to the window of a state park and asking them for a free annual pass. You show your military ID because you'll have that ID for life once you've retired. Uh, you should have that retired military ID and they give you a free park pass. So that's actually a cool benefit, especially being out here in the West. We take full advantage of that. So <laughs> you've earned it, why not? <laughs> and then we'll talk about some job status and local status. So if you don't like what you're doing, if you've transitioned and you're a year out and you just absolutely hate the job that you're in, it's okay to change it. Don't feel like you can't change it. Uh, you're in a position that you kind of hold that power with yourself, that you're able to make those decisions. If your family's miserable and you guys hate where you're at, say you go to gray Michigan and it's just cold and miserable and you just can't stand it, you have that option to change it. Uh, don't feel like you're stuck where you're at um, because military professionals are highly sought out by a ton of companies. So there will be offers from around the country. Uh, give it a real assessment and discuss it with other professionals. Uh, find people who are in either the same career path that you're going or people who are in a completely different path that you're going. Um, if you haven't used your GI Bill, maybe you can go back to school or go to school. That's an option too, if you decide that you just want something completely different. Uh, some disappointments that arise from transitioning, transitioning from the military will be present at locations and jobs no matter where you're at. Um, you don't have to stay, like we said. It's something that is up to you and you have that power. Uh, you may lose a little bit on moving if you decide that you've bought a house and you have to sell that house. Uh, with rising prices, you may even break even, but we've seen here lately that that shift is starting to happen uh, where it's taking a little bit longer for houses to sell. They're not getting as many uh, offers on houses. So you've just got to be aware of your surroundings uh, at the time you decide that you're going to take a different direction. Aaron, we have another question on there and I'll, I'll just kind of comment on it as well. Uh, another way to think about um, when you get your disability rating back, uh, it was in my case as well, a lot of the areas I was just targeting 0% on. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is, is 30 years from now when the government learns that, uh, for instance, all the burn pits were actually toxic to us and 
uh, even my, my generation is already uh, having cancer issues or other things, a 0% rating will then have the VA be on the hook to pay for future medical bills under that area. You just won't receive uh, current disability monthly payments from that. But one thing I did learn during that process, uh, and, I'm, and I'm not a big fan or, or trying to uh, support it, is the idea of, of rating shopping. There's a difference between trying just to get the highest rating in order to get a monthly payment. And there's a difference between when you get a first diagnosis back and it may be exceptionally low and you don't think you were fairly treated or you were not um, communicating well. So one thing I did find, there's many services out there. Uh, for instance, Allsup uh, is an attorney group that helps with veterans refiling after they get their first initial back. And what I found out they were able to help a lot of my Marines better do is communicate and phrase things of their ailments in the verbiage that the law is written to. When you go and you do some of these uh, doctor interviews, they're looking for certain things because they're given criteria of a left and right lateral limit and saying that if they fit inside this, then this is the rating. If they fit inside this, this is the rating. And I was learning that, for instance, with my back, I thought it's broken. That's just the outcome. Instead, it was these are the different services provided and outcomes. So you can ask for help in that. And there are attorneys who do it. Uh, they cannot charge you up front. They can only take a percentage of the increase they get you on the back pay. So uh, if you find someone who is trying to charge, do not go forward with them. Uh, it's actually against the law. The other thing, Aaron, you mentioned that a question came up about uh, was the rating letters. Uh, there's a lot of those, like the home loan one you mentioned, the disability rating one you mentioned. Uh, some of those are needed for benefits like the national park system uh, that you got to mail in a, in a letter. When you go on there, uh, your personal information is protected. So there's several versions of those letters for different purposes. Uh, some will simply state your rating that you received. Some will state a rating, a monthly payment, and then how the ailments are broken out. And then some will just report, for instance, your home loan that you're eligible for it. One thing that I learned and, and didn't understand, and this is kind of a big change, is I had to mentally accept that the government wasn't there to help me anymore. And when I say that, I took my uh, home loan letter to the first lender, trusted them, thinking they're going to do right by me, not recognizing they wanted a commission out of the deal. I gave them my letter, and then I was told I had to put down a down payment because of, of how my letter was done. What I realized is someone had entered something in wrong, and so it didn't give me full eligibility in my initial letter. I had to research that myself, find that out, go back in, get it corrected and then take a new letter there. So I didn't actually have to have a down payment as my letter wasn't completely uh, used. And then the last thing, Aaron, that you mentioned that another good question was the GI Bill benefits and passing it on to your kids. Uh, since this is targeted on individuals, uh, mainly in retirement uh, for senior enlisted and officers, uh, that GI Bill benefit, you're grandfathered into the old rules in which you can pass it on if you're not going to use it. The newer rules of people who are still serving, uh, you have to pass that on while serving, and then you have certain service requirements after you pass it on. Typically, there's a way out of it of you keep one month for yourself, give some months to your, your spouse and months to your kids, and then afterwards, later, you can move around the months as needed. But most individuals uh, are grandfathered into the old policy where Aaron was talking about of, if you're not going to use it, pass it on to the kid or a spouse. I have some questions here that came in. And uh, this one's maybe just maybe asking for personal experiences. Um, what helped adjust to the civilian culture as opposed to the military culture? 
You want to go first? So say the question one more time. <laughs> so obviously the difference between the military culture and the civilian culture is pretty stark. What helped the most? <laughs> what do you, what to expect? <laughs> that kind of thing. Like, oh gosh. Um, you know, it's different for me because I, I'm a military spouse. Um, my husband was enlisted and then did green to gold and became an officer. So he was in for, oh gosh, in the U.S. 13 years, uh, but I had only been, we'll say, in the system uh, for roughly like six years. Uh, so I didn't get the full experience that he had. Um, so my transition was a little bit easier than his, I would say. Um, but he had kind of already set himself up. Uh, he pretty much followed all of this transition that we've discussed. Um, he had all of his medical in line. Uh, he worked with the VA to get all of the disability in line. Um, he had taken off and actually done his MBA, so he used his GI Bill. Um, we kind of got really lucky in that he transitioned into a federal position. Um, so going into that sector, uh, actually helped him transition a little bit easier. Um, now, there are tons of hiccups with his transition that we've had uh, in terms of the VA. That's a big one. I think that's a big one for everybody. Um, and then the career, it is different. I will say that that's one thing is that it's different. It doesn't matter whether you go government or in the private sector, it is different. Um, the camaraderie is different. The people are different. Um, it's more of a corporate aspect. Uh, and so we've found that that has actually been a lot, little bit harder than uh, just going, you know, not working or, you know, staying in the military. Um, for me being a spouse, the only thing that I could do was just help make it easier, <laughs> um, support him in his decisions. Uh, and, and if I could give some advice on being a spouse, I would say that it's very important to include your spouse in all those decisions that you're making uh, because they are very much part of it with you. Uh, remember that they're having to move to, uh, they're having to uproot their life, the kids are having to uproot their lives. Uh, so don't neglect them in the transition. That would be a big thing. Uh, make sure you do have those conversations about where you're moving, uh, you know, the job that you're taking. Are you going to be working 80 hours like you were? Or are you going to have more time for the family? Um, so those are the biggest things that I've found that were tough in the transition. And, and along those same lines, I think uh, one positive thing was technology actually works. Uh, in the Marine Corps, comms never work, uh, computers never work, everything is slow, it's 10 years old, it, it's never, you go out to the private sector and it's the fastest, latest, it's always functioning, it, it is very, a nice welcome thing. On the other side, from a personality standpoint, uh, as Aaron will tell you, I had to learn from that mentality of you can't come out and knife hand someone and tell them to do something and expect it to get done. Uh, they don't respond well to that. Uh, so for me, it was a mental shift of people are going to disappoint me. It's not a common mission. Everyone's on their own kind of rat race trying to fend for themselves. But at the same time, you can benefit from that of my work ethic of being the first one at the office and the last one to leave paid off. Uh, and it was recognized by my senior leadership of traits they wanted in other people uh, to have, but they didn't. They weren't brought up that way uh, and they weren't trained that way. And uh, back to Aaron's point is I found victories through my spouse. So she taught me to take frustration breaks of I'm just over civilians. They're not meeting my expectations. I'm going to go walk around the building for five minutes and just enjoy the fresh air and, and actually call my spouse. And listening to her and her successes of the change, I knew then I was winning. Uh, and so it's not always necessarily you, but listening to your family and listening to them and how they are thriving. Uh, those are big internal wins, I guess that I, I took away from it. Thank you so much for that answer there. We have another um, kind of more specific one. You talked about there was a, there's a gap in getting your benefits and your paycheck. 
um, typically, and how long should you plan for, have financial reserves for knowing that that's going to be an eventuality? Hi, uh, in short, that's that kind of timeline leading up to it at six months and what you're going to do um, and how sure you are of that situation. So first, I always thought um, we were overconfident in that transition. In, in my tenure, it was everyone's going, you know, to private contractors and they're going to make 600 grand a year and they're just going to be deployed. Uh, and on base, that's, you know, you watched a, a gazillion military officers or senior enlisted uh, get out and then they would come on the next deployment with you making five times as much. Uh, that ended um, and all of a sudden the transition was back to reality of can you go out and can you map over those skills uh, to the civilian sector and get an equivalent level. And I, I feel like most of my peer group um, of junior majors were struggling to get at a high enough level uh, starting out to replace their full salary and full suite of benefits. Uh, so since that was the case, having six months of emergency funds was not out of the question going into a sales position right after I left. Uh, I was able to double dip for 90 days, which got me through training and was beneficial. But then I had eight months worth of reserves and I used all eight months of it uh, until I finally found my niche and was able to succeed. But as far as most individuals, if you're gonna leave, you have something that's fairly set up or highly confident in, uh, we at least recommend 90 days minimum, but six months is more applicable. As far as your pension goes, uh, we say up to 60 days late, they usually fix it by the second month uh, if the first month doesn't quite align. And then as far as VA disability, we tell everyone plan on at least a year's delay. I've seen it as fast as three months, but as I said, um, during my tenure, they were as long as 18 months, but they have caught up currently. All right, and then I think we have time for one more question. Uh, obviously, transitioning out, it's a big transition job, life, moving. Uh, can we talk a little bit about preparing for retirement now that you're entering a new career? If I understand the the question correctly, um, you're proverbially uh, institutionalized after doing the 20 years in, uh, in, in making that transition. Yes, you do need to prepare and celebrate your victory of retirement. You've given a great deal to your country um, and you should be recognized and take time to enjoy that. Um, and if you're in a financial situation where you have plenty of income, your spouse is potentially working, you're able to ride out the delays in your pension and VA disability, uh, by all means, take some time to yourself and, and enjoy it and spend time with the family since you've been gone and deployed uh, and celebrate those. If you're referencing retirement from the second career, now that you're doing that, uh, I definitely did that. I decided that I wanted a career with my retirement already in mind of I could get to a pre or early retirement in a career if I found someone willing to compensate me for my effort. Uh, and so doing that and finding something, I do plan to retire early. And I did that by finding a career choice that I was able to do that. So I got hired with the end in mind already. Aaron, I don't know if you wanna add on to that. Uh, no, I would just say that if, um, in my case, if you're not at full retirement age from the military, you haven't done your 20 years and you're getting out early, say 10, whatever that case may be, uh, planning for future income for retirement. Uh, remember, there's pensions that are had uh, to be had in retirement if you stay that full 20 years. So really honestly think about reserves or something of that matter where you can still put that time towards it uh, because you've already done 10 years. So the reserves is a super easy way to help stabilize and get that pension for your future. 
Um, it doesn't take much time. Yes, I know it's one week in the month, which kind of stinks, but <laughs> uh, most of the time it's not that arduous and it's super easy. And then you get a pension that'll help in retirement. Um, now, if you can double dip and you get a federal job too, and you can get a pension there, that'll also help you set up yourself for retirement and have two pensions at that point. Um, so there's a lot of different ways to work it to make sure if you haven't done your full 20, you can do this. If you have done your full 20 and you're beginning another career, here's how you can do it. Um, so to piggyback off of Derek, I would look for companies that you can double dip on pensions if you have that opportunity. Um, find other sources of income that that company will give you. Maybe they do 401k programs that match a higher percentage. Um, there's a lot of things to look at when you do that transition. So, yeah. Well, thank you very much. It's all the time we have for questions. I want to just um, emphasize to those who have been on the webinar today, if you have a question we haven't covered as I do this outro, you're welcome to put your questions in the comments. We will save those and, and reach out to you. Um, just make sure to include your phone number as well so we can con contact you. Uh, once again, on behalf of Advice Chaser, thank you, Derek and Aaron, for being here, being our guest speakers. Really, uh, really important content today and really appreciate it. Thank you to the, uh, thank you to the, the organizations that have made this possible today. To our attendees, look for a, a link for a replay of this event in the next day or so, and you're welcome to share that replay with your friends and family. Here at Advice Chaser, we're all about helping you find a financial advisor who's a great fit for your life and your financial questions. Our matching service is free to you and every one of our advisor partners is committed to offer a free initial consultation to anyone we introduce them to. Find out more by going to advicechaser.com and clicking on the link to find an advisor. Once again, from Advice Chaser, thank you so much for coming and we will see you at another webinar soon. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.